Also, it's like... Also, he's annoying because he had that shit friend. Whip. You remember? Oh, oh <laughs> he did have that shit friend. Anyway, you will never know what we were talking no, about what, there. Where have we started? Yeah, we've started. Have we? We started Are when we ready you went, to go? He had that shit friend and nobody will know <laughs> who it's about. Me and Susie just gossiping in the wings. But that's when it hits me. There's a figure standing around 30 metres away, like... Oh like 20 metres from the road in the trees. First I thought I was seeing stuff, but no, he was standing still, not moving at all. Betty, I I was going to, Betty bought, oh fuck, Betty bought some butter, Betty butter, bought some butter, but it made a batter bitter, so she bought some batter butter and it made a batter better. Maybe, gag bang. To episode forty-six. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Stop. Is it? Are you sure it's 46? wishing time away? It's forty-six. Welcome to episode, episode 46, forty-six of Ghost Town. Well, all that's staying in. Excellent. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi. How are you? Yeah. No, I'm well. Yeah. Can you you don't look it. <laughs> Gotta fool me. So, um, Lewis, the, our, our lovely technician here, um, asked me if the, uh, these are medical grade <laughs> glasses. I said it's fashion. Um, he fashion. said fashion. fashion. High fashion. High fashion. That's. I am wearing some high. On fa- an accent there. No. Oh yeah. By the way, whoever put on TikTok, can you stop with the accents? Needs to get in a bin because <laughs> I'll never stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. And whoever on TikTok says, <laughs> "Oh, that woman really ruins it." What a shame. Talking about me. <laughs> Can shut the fuck up. That was me from my burner account. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise it's me. Such a shame Stupid that other woman's slag. there. <laughs> if someone posts on TikTok, why is that slag on it again? If someone posts on TikTok, oh my god, those glasses are stunning. We'll know it's you. Oh my god, no, they're great glasses. Who's that hun in the stunning medical grey glasses? <laughs> is she broken a leg? <laughs> Uh, Has she got some compression socks on also? <laughs> she got chlamydia. <laughs> um, um, how are you doing though, other than your head? Um, well, listen, mentally, physically, not great. Thriving. <laughs> <laughs> and thriving at the same time. Yeah. No, um, I'll explain these. Yeah, I think you should. I think it's it's best. Are you not um, going to give everyone a little peek? Um, no, you, you I could. Ma- I will want, maybe at a scary point in the story because that'll really <laughs> jump the scare everyone. Me. If you're listening and not watching, head on to YouTube uh, for this episode so you can see what I'm wearing. I'm wearing um, some lovely uh, orange. Yeah, they are nice. I found them in Margate. Very actually. 70s. It's very chic in Margate. Is it Margate? Oh, is it? Honestly, it was. Oh, it was fucking great there. We um, haven't spoke since you went to Margate, have we? No, no. Well, we have, obviously. Well, we have. Not but on the not pod. On, not on the pod official. No. Um, but anyway, so basically I found these and uh, on Monday I went for my fourth session of microneedling. And I had a new woman. I don't know whether she... Maybe she didn't sterilise the needles. Don't know what the fuck she was up to. She was having an off day. Jabbing me like a fucking pin cushion. And um, my face is just freaked out. But it's because the day after, I reckon, I was doing some heavy lifting. So I was cleaning the flat for seven hours. I can't wait to see where this is going. What and, do you mean? Well, as in, like, I was moving stuff out into, like, the van. I did. A, I moved house yeah. the day no, after. No, I understand what moving house is. <laughs> yeah, what, what are you I want about? to know how it has affected your face. Oh, because my eyes have basically closed shut. What do you shut. mean you've moved house? Well, it's when you, you pick know, up... You know boxes. <laughs> you know houses. <laughs> and possessions. You know living. You know walls. <laughs> That's Sometimes great. I don't know with you, mate. I and don't... you had a birthday. I had a birthday. As well. I did. Um, I have got you birthday presents. Oh, my God. But you told me they're not here. I have fucking left them in stoke on track because I'm a melon. But what we're going to do now, mm-hmm. I've got Harry ready and waiting. You're Cameraman a Harry. Okay, yeah, and a cantaloupe. I've got Harry ready and waiting uh, to show you your presents <gasps> on FaceTime. Oh. Because what's going to happen is... 
I'm uh, probably the next time I remember him, I'm just going to see you in person. We're not, but I want everyone on the pod to see them as well. So Ooh. we'll show you and then you'll have them next week. How's that sound? Oh, it sounds bloody great. Because I was oh, so annoyed all week. I was like, don't forget, don't forget the presents, don't forget the presents, don't forget the presents. And I've put them and I've just fucking forgotten them, haven't I? So we're calling Harry. This is Harry Bitchkovsky, cameraman et brother, mon frère. That's how you say my brother, isn't mon it? Mon frère. Watch him not answer the phone now, even though I've told He's him. He's probably asleep. Oh, here we go. Hi. Video paused. Good. Hello. Hello, you okay? Say hi to all the listeners. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> shut no, Hannah, up. Hannah. Hannah, <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> Hannah. I'm your sister, Hannah. Um, say hi to the listeners. Are you live now? Yeah, hi, live. Harry. We're recording. Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah, are you in my room? Yeah. Okay, so there is, you know, next to my bed? Yeah. Yeah, on to the right of the bed, there's three lo- There's three boxes. Uh, there you go, next yeah. to the, yeah. Okay, so Susie, here's the thing. There is, there's a big box. Yeah. There's a medium box and there's Ooh, a little box. Like- Which one do you want first? Ah! I want the big box. Because the other ones you don't get. Big, big, big. No. You do get. You want the big one? Yeah. Okay. Big one. So your first gift. Harry, could you please show Susie what the gift is and tell her what it is? Oh, this is dead exciting. Susie, you've won a trip to (laughs) Bendel. Oh, my God, thank you. No, don't, don't lie. What is it? It looks like a sort of... What is it? It's a cauldron, Maxwelt. Maxwelt? Wax melt. Well, what? Today. It's a cauldron, <laughs> and you put your candle underneath, and you wax in the cauldron, and it melts. Oh, how lovely. Very Stunning. witchy. Stunning. Very witchy. Stunning. Very witchy. Thank you so much. Look at that. Look at that. That's like... Oh, it's tiny. It's not plastic. Yeah, because it's, it's for the wax. Oh, so hang on, you put a you little put tea candle. light. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, that's it, so cute. Because you like a candle I and do you love are a, a witch. I am. <laughs> okay. Okay, which one, the medium? Oh, look, Harry's going to show it what it looks like. Look, it hangs. Oh, that's very cute. Stunning, isn't it? That is absolutely stunning. I think that's very really witchy, adorable, very yeah. on brand. Okay, which one do you want next? Literally. The, the really little one? Yeah. Okay, that's it, yeah. So, these are... Harry can't open them. Is it like a p- nice pair of earrings? It is actually. No. Yeah, it's a pair of earrings. <laughs> can you no. get them? Can you get one out, please, to show Susie what they look like? Yeah. Oh my god, the telepathy is on point guessed. today. That's mad. No, but I, I'm actually. I think that we have telepathic powers. Something's with going each other. on, isn't it? Something's yeah. Something's happening. Where have you gone, Harry? Oh, I think I'm on the bed. What? Have you got them? Oh god. Can you just okay? Can you hold? Show? Can you show us what's in what what? What they actually look like? Okay, that's fair. Can't believe I guessed. No, move it away. No, face it, Harry. Face it the right way. So the is, this, is this bad podcast? Face it the right. This is awful podcast. So Harry, face yes, it the right I'm way sorry. so I can see. Oh my god, this is dreadful. No, hold it. We can cut this out. I can't. What do you mean? Oh, there it is. Turn it round so I can actually. That's the back, Harry. <laughs> Oh, well, meanwhile... Just um, there you go. Can you see it? The little ghost earrings! Oh, they're so cute! And I thought they'd go with your silver necklace. Oh, that's really cute. Little stud ghosties. Little stud ghosties. Oh, you're so cute. Thank you. Okay, time for the last one. Middly. The middle one. Okay, this is... Adopt a ghost. What? Adopt a ghost. What do you mean? I... What the fuck it is that? It looks like a rabbit's foot, to be honest with you. Adopt but a ghost? Like adopt a ghost. in Africa ghost. or something? No, that's a ghost in there. Uh, <laughs> Harry, could you open the box, please? It's got a little scroll and everything. Oh like in, like it, what his name so is. So I've got my own little pet? Yeah, it's like you've, it's like you've adopted a leopard. Oh, I love... <laughs> but you have got to pay the 6 99 a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've given me a subscription, thank yeah. you. You have to pay. Um, so it's in a little box. Oh, it's all gone black. But that's... There you go, look at that. A bit scary, actually. Looks like a sperm. Oh, it's got what two eyes? Has it got? Oh, that's really cute. That, how cute's that? Oh, I've got a little like um, Adopt a academic. Ghost. You've got a ghost pet. Oh, I've got. A ghost... What does the scrolls? Look at that little scroll as well. What shall I call it? Well, I think it might already have a name. Really? Well, I think that's what. Can you take? Can you have a look at the scroll, please? We'll we'll package all this back up. 
Yeah, I want well, to open the scroll. It. Yeah, oh, do you want? Do you want not want to open it? I want to. No, I want to open it. Okay, leave it, Harry. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I should open it. What? I shouldn't open it. Yeah, no, but I do it's, want it's to know my, his name. It's my pet scroll. I think it's going to be like Graham. Do you think, yeah. And I'm, I'm okay oh, with do that. Do you know what? I really want to know now if it is Graham. <laughs> Could you imagine if it's Graham? I'd like Okay, that. so there are your gifts. Do you like them? I absolutely adore them. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Lovely. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to me. Bye. Thank you, Harry. Loads of love. Bye. 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 bye, bye, bye oh, bye, thank bye, you bye, so bye. much. I it's love exciting, isn't it? Do you like them? I absolutely love them. Oh, I'm Your thrilled. January. February. January. January. I forgot then. Yeah. <laughs> I've also I've asked her, Adam for some. I know this is I know this is going back a bit of time, but I've gone. I really want some ultra mini platform Ugg boots. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, have you seen them? No. Oh, let me show them to you. Ultra and I'm, mini. I'm so in love with them. Do you know I like a platform? Ultra mini. Medical grade platforms. Medical grade. Yeah, they do look a bit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You have yes. to get the wedge. Platform mugs. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. I mean, they. Oh, I just love them. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Um... Look, they're a bit Kerry Katona is perhaps yeah, outside look, with Aldi. Those, with those socks, oh. I just love them. I mean, to take your bins out, but uh, no, I just love them. No, I love them. Okay, I don't. That's I just all that matters. Do you really? Remember how comfortable they are. I know. I just feel like I've seen that with a dressing gown, fag on. Not those. They are one hundred and fifty quid. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like outside a big Surrey mm. house. Yeah. It's a bit footballer wife. That's fine. I'm okay with yeah, that. Exactly. I'm fine. With exactly. That. I'm you fine love with it. That. I'm fine um, with that. Okay. Shall we do a tarot? Yes, please. Do you want to explain what's happened? Yeah, because I've moved house, um, which <coughs> is putting things in boxes, <laughs> um, putting them in the what? van. Yeah, that's it. Um, because of that move, I, my head was all over the place and I shoved all of the ghost huns. Um, merch and bits and bobs in a big box and it's gone to Ealing um, so, and that's not where I am I'm in North London now so um, yeah essentially I haven't got the tarot cards and Hannah you're going to have to do it digitally we're going to have to do it okay that's fine well thankfully technology means that we can do it online okay so that's great okay so um, it says this is this is going to pick five cards okay um, it says we've shuffled cards six times. Now please tap on the deck and choose six t- cards. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. You ready? On, yeah. So I'm going to choose. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Get my reading. Oh, you had to pick six. I had to pick six. Okay, so one, we've got how I feel about myself, the magician. Mm. So that's how we feel about the podcast. There's a sense of purpose. Yeah, always. Willpower to get things done. Oh, oh my God, business. Stunning. Business. Self-empowerment is the key word. Mm. Any new enterprises in love or career show great potential. Oh, for oh. fuck's sake. That's amazing. That's phenomenal, isn't it? What we want the most right now. Oh, it's a naked lady. <laughs> we just no, we're gonna get, we're gonna do, no, you're right. We want to do naked podcasting. That's what we're doing. Too many clients. Just me naked, liking. but with the sunnies on. Um, so this is the star. Oh my god. This is eerie. The star suggests that what you want most at this time is some good fortune. Oh my god. So I'm... we want to be rich. Yeah. And we kind of do. If you have been ill, <gasps> suffered bereavement. Or disappointment in love. Yeah. I've got goosebumps. Stop it. Your luck is about to change. Ah! This is your wish card. It will bring happiness, fulfilment and good health. Oh, my God. Stop. What? You may also receive gifts. <gasps> I literally just have three of them. Small, middle that, and large. Small, middle and large. <laughs> that is eerie I love that so Shut, much oh I can't we've turned into actual witches oh my god okay the internet is so spot on isn't it uh, okay so the, the card three is the fears so fears for the podcast you are afraid of taking action lack, lack confidence and willpower well, I don't think that's true mm, I think you're a bit too confident that was a dud yeah dud that's a dud um, but this is a time to be positive and proactive to prevent loss of momentum delays and stagnation completion and success are only one step away Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is going for us? Yeah. The Empress. The harvest is here. 
you are entering a cycle of abundance, happiness and joy. Creative energy is high. So if you are considering starting a family, nope, mm -mm. a new job mm -mm. or artistic endeavour, this is a favourable time. Oh, bloody great. Uh, five is what is going against us. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. Oh, this is bad. Oh, my God. Go on. Watch out for being too arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you literally were like, we're arrogant. <laughs> oh, uh, or letting that ego of yours get overinflated. Nobody likes a know-it-all. Oh, shit. You know what? That's the humbling we That's needed. The humbling, of course. Um, watch that temper too. Aggressive bullying will only set you back, Susie. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my trolling so of your bullying. TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If this doesn't sound like you'd be aware of someone like this, you could set you back. Well, we know fucking loads of them in comedy. Mm. This is the time of movement and change, so don't give up. That did say that before. Um, wow. So the card six is the likely outcome. Help is at hand. If you want wise counsel and moral guidance, put your trust in someone you have a lot of respect for. Don't allow others to influence you too much with what they want you to conform to. Be true to yourself. When considering your options, go with tried and tested traditional values rather than the unconventional novel approach. For example, marriage is more likely to be your desire than a living together situation. What? What? So get married, but don't live with them. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. Mm, I, do you know what? In a way, I think that's quite healthy. I think that's great. Lock, well, lock it down for tax purposes, but happy. don't live with the cunt. Absolutely. Mm. I think this is... I think that was great overall. Oh my, honestly, I'm bowled over by my presence, by the reading. I'm absolutely thrilled. The telepathy of the, the year. telepathy? Oh my God. Jesus. Should we do a story? Have you got a story? Who wants to go first? Let me see. <clears throat> I've got one that's part one and part two, so I need to do part one now. Why, okay. Why didn't you kick us off with your part I'll one then? I'll kick us off. I'll kick us off. Okay. Do you want a story? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. I'm ready. This is called... Do you want the name? Yes. My Daughter's Closet. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. It all started a few years ago. My husband and I had just bought our very first house together after living four years in a small apartment. We had spent most of our relationship living in that cramped space even before we got married. So, when my husband got a better job opportunity, we both knew that a house would be a much better suited for us, especially if we wanted to start a family someday. We found this cute three-bedroom house just outside the city in a very nice little community. The house stood at the end of the street at the edge of the woods. It was a comfortable two-storey house with all the bedrooms upstairs. Sounds great. I mean, I don't know why we're going into such detail about Apart it, but fine. The, being close to the woods. Apart from That's the woods. my big red flag. <laughs> it had a decent... Pocky. <laughs> Pocky. It had a decent sized backyard with the woods just behind the picket fence that surrounded the house. My husband, of course, was in love with it. I, on the other hand, had a very strange feeling about it. A feeling that told me something was off about this place. But still, it was a lot better than the previous apartment that we had just left. Plus, we meant that we would have a lot of privacy. At first, I thought it was adorable, a wonderful home to start a family in. But as the weeks went on, I kept having this uneasy feeling about something. I couldn't quite understand it. But I had this sensation that I wasn't alone. Mm. I quickly brushed it off, thinking that it was just my imagination. Of course, not long after we moved in, I got pregnant. My husband and I were so happy when we found out, we immediately got to work on the baby's room right next to ours, picking out all kinds of clothes and deciding whether or not to paint the walls or buy wallpaper. We were so excited about starting our new family. But on the days when my husband was at work, that feeling of not being alone came back, especially when I was in the baby's room. Then one day, in my late second trimester, I was... Is that like month six? No, <clears throat> month three to as six. It, as if I know that. <clears throat> that is just... As if I know trimester. trimester. Isn't, that, isn't that like a marathon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, try Maltesers. Try <laughs> I have three. Try, <laughs> Six bean. nuggies and the three Maltesers. Oh, that sounds like a delicious meal, actually. Mm. Um, well, what? whenever that was, I was in the baby's room painting the walls, deciding to go with pink after finding out it was a girl. Suddenly, I heard a noise. At first, I didn't know what it was, but it sounded like a small thud. That wasn't a thud, really, was no, it? That was a thud. Good thud. <laughs> great great <laughs> thud. It startled me and listened. Oh, fuck off. It startled me. No, I won't. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It startled me and I listened intently for a while. Not sure if I made it up or not, but then I heard it again. It was quiet, but it was definitely there. And it was coming from the closet. Oh, my God. 
cautiously feeling my heart beating faster in my chest. I moved towards the closet. It was a double fold. <laughs> a double fold <food> door. <laughs> <laughs> She's from Bristol. It's nice double folded doors. Double folded doors, isn't it? <laughs> that was quite it good. Was actually. <laughs> it was a double. Oh god, hang on. Cautiously feeling my heart beating faster in my chest, I moved. Well, thank God for that. I moved towards the closet. It was a double folded door that was quite large. It was large enough for you to stand in and have your arms out. I didn't know what I was going to find up there, but I was also afraid to find out. Slowly, I gripped both handles, my hands shaking as I did so. Then, like a band-aid, I jerked the doors open, expecting to see someone standing there, only to reveal nothing. It was completely empty. I was taken aback. I could have sworn I'd heard something. But then I heard the thud again. This time, it was above me. I looked up at the only thing above me, a small square lid that led to the attic. Now my heart was pounding so hard that I thought it was going to burst. Now I know that something was up there. But I was no coward. I went down to the kitchen to grab a knife from the counter and I returned to the attic door. Stealing my nerves, I climbed up the stepladder I was using before and pressed up against the lid. I opened the lid just enough to peer inside the attic, but I couldn't see anything. And I think that terrified me more than anything. It's like a raccoon. Imagine. It'd be a little animal. What are you getting mm. a knife out for? Wouldn't you get a knife? No. I, little animal. Little you getting animal. A knife? Get a knife? The fact that I couldn't see clearly into the darkness with the thought of something in there staring back at me made my blood run cold. I held the knife tightly in my hand, preparing for the worst. I scanned the area around me, but I still could see, couldn't see anything. I'm going to say that again. I scanned the area around me, but I still couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything either. It was so quiet. Suddenly something jumped at my face from out of the darkness. I screamed loudly, loudly losing my footing and collapsing onto the floor. I was in immense pain as I landed awkwardly on the ladder. It was at that moment that my husband, who had just arrived home from work early, ran up the stairs and entered the room in a panic. He asked me what had happened, but before I could explain, I heard skittering on the carpet floor. We both looked up to see a tiny chipmunk. I fucking told you. Running across the floor. This is, I think this is just a misdirection. Oh, it's a little red. Trying red to hide under whatever coming. it could find to shelter. Seeing the little chipmunk running around and realising that it was the one making all the noise, I nearly burst out laughing at how ridiculous it all was. If it weren't for the searing pain and my back falling over... Oh, sorry. I nearly burst out laughing at how ridiculous it all was if it wasn't for the searing pain in the back from my shoulder. What? Oh, fuck off, right. <laughs> I nearly burst out laughing at how ridiculous it all was if it weren't for the searing pain in my back from falling over. And just as my husband was trying to get the chipmunk out of my house, my thoughts then turned to my baby. Was my baby OK? I called my husband's name and just as he came rushing back into the room after finally getting the chipmunk out of the house, he quickly helped me into the car and brought me to the hospital. Thankfully, the baby was unharmed. Although, I was going to say unarmed. <laughs> the baby didn't have a gun. Well, it's probably in America, so I am surprised. <laughs> Although I was going to have a bruised back for a good while, my husband and I were just relieved that our baby was OK. After leaving the hospital, we went straight home. But the moment we stepped through the door, that feeling of uneasiness returned. I tried ignoring it, thinking that it was just my anxiety over my pregnancy messing with me. Later that night, I was lying in bed with my husband and it was getting close to midnight and I was trying to get some sleep. But for whatever reason, I just couldn't. I was lying on my back with my eyes closed, feeling rather annoyed about not sleeping. But then that same feeling of being watched returned. If it's that fucking chipmunk again, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I've been signed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what chipmunks make, what sound they make. Um, is that a rabbit? No, don't, that's classed as asthma, and we're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> Stop chewing! <laughs> oh, God. I listened carefully, trying to pinpoint exactly where it was outside the bedroom. The sound of walking slowly grew louder, like it was getting closer. And that's when the dreaded truth hit me, as I remembered. We never shut the bedroom door. Hmm. Suddenly, the footsteps stopped, and I could hear something else now. Breathing. I could hear it clearly. Very good. It's right next to me, standing right at the edge of my bed. It's like me going up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> that chipmunk's Carrying not Carrying around this rack all day long. <laughs> <laughs> 
Knockers for days. No, knockers for days. My heart was pounding and I could feel a cold sweat all over my body. I tried to move, but my body refused. I was paralysed with fear. Its breathing was closer now. Oh, my God, that was really good. I could feel it right next to my ear. I could feel my tears rolling down my face as I tried to keep myself from crying. I didn't want whatever it was to know I was awake and aware of it. I silently prayed to myself, hoping for it to go away. The next thing I felt was a long, skinny hand. It's Mr Longfingers. I slowly pressed down on my stomach, followed by a low grunt entering my ear. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. I just think that was Adam, to be honest. (laughs) I was finally able to get control of my body and let out a blood-curdling scream. (laughs) Very good. As I sat up on my bed, my husband woke up and quickly turned on the lights, frantically asking what was wrong. I looked around the room for whatever that thing was, but there was nothing. The room was empty and the bedroom door was wide open. I began sobbing uncontrollably and my husband wrapped his arms around me, trying to calm me down. I told him everything that had happened, even though saying it all aloud just sounded crazy. My husband was telling me that it was probably sleep paralysis, but I told him that it wasn't, that I was wide awake for everything. He looked everywhere in the house and he couldn't find anything. When he came back, I cried in his arms. He rubbed my back gently. Fortunately, that was the last time something like that happened. I kept my bedroom door shut every night and even bought myself a nightlight, as childish as it sounds. My husband thought so too, but supported me nonetheless. But whether he approved or not, I was never going to feel that helpless again. Although no incident happened after that night, the same feeling of being watched never left. As the weeks went by, I started feeling better about that night. The more I thought about it, the more I began to question whether or not it was really sleep paralysis. I did research on it and found that there were a few cases. After a while, I came to the conclusion that maybe it was just sleep paralysis and I was remembering it wrong. I started to feel a lot better after that. A few months had passed and I finally gave birth to a healthy baby girl named Bella. Ah. Cute. I once knew a blind Labrador (laughs) called Bella. (laughs) Okay. She was lovely. Poor Bella. She's dead now. A few months had passed and I finally gave birth to a healthy baby girl that we named Bella. I was so happy to have my family that I had nearly forgotten about that night entirely. Everything changed once the baby came home. I was so busy with her that the feeling of being watched was nearly forgotten as well. Even though she was a handful at times, I was very grateful for the distraction. However, a few months later, things started getting weird again. We kept Bella in the nursery at night, with all the doors open in case she needed me, which was almost every night. She would always wake up around 2am. She didn't need to be fed or changed, though. My husband and I just assumed she wanted attention, because as soon as we picked her up, she went right back to sleep. This has been happening after the first month... This has been happening after the first month of her being home. One night, I heard Bella crying, same time around 2am, like clockwork. I was feeling extra tired and didn't really have the strength to climb out of bed just yet. But after a few minutes of hearing my daughter wailing from the nursery, I finally pushed myself out of bed. However, as soon as I stepped out of the room, my daughter suddenly stopped crying. I was slightly concerned by this and quickly rushed into the nursery. Once I got there, I saw her sound asleep in a crib. I was really confused by this as she wouldn't go back to sleep unless either my husband or I were holding her. But there she was, sound asleep as if she hadn't woken up at all. I was puzzled for sure, but seeing that Bella was perfectly fine made me relax and I headed back to bed. That was the last time she woke me up in the middle of the night. A few years later, another strange occurrence happened. Bella was now four and she had just started learning more and more about her imagination. She would always be up in her room, playing with the toys and chatting away while I cleaned the house. But then I got curious about what she was up to and decided to peek, on, peek in on her while she, oh, freaky mm-hmm. Lynn, while she was playing. I poked my head around the door frame and saw her playing with the toys and chatting away to herself just like she normally did. But what I found curious was that she was playing by the closet door that was now open. I thought this was strange because I'm sure I'd closed it and she didn't know how to open the doors. I just shrugged it off though, since there was nothing dangerous in there. I thought it was fine. But then... She looked up at the closet and began talking to it. Mm. As if she was actually talking to someone in there. I was very curious about her behaviour and continued to watch her further. But as Bella continued talking to her closet, all the memories of what had occurred came flooding back. My daughter then looked my way, giving me the same adorable smile that I loved so much. I didn't want to worry her, so I put on my best smile, hoping that she wouldn't notice my anxiety, before entering the room and kneeling down beside her. Hey, sweetie, I said in a gentle voice. Hey, mommy. 
she said happily. Who were you talking to just now? Bella didn't answer me right away. She returned her attention back to the doll in her hands. Max, she finally answered. Max? I asked. I certainly wasn't expecting that name. And who's Max, sweetie? Bella looked back at me with her usual smile. Max is my friend. He plays with me all the time. And where is Max? Bella pointed up to the closet. He lives in there. I looked up at the closet, but there was nothing in there. Seeing that nothing was in there, I looked back at my daughter who was still smiling and playing with her doll. Sweetie, I asked, trying my best not to let my anxiety show. What does Max look like? Bella smiled even wider when she looked up at me. He's very tall. He's this big. She tried raising her hands as high as she could. He has long arms and a really big head. <laughs> <laughs> My heart was beginning to pound even harder now. I was almost certain that Bella was talking to something paranormal. I looked up into the closet feeling really uneasy. Was there a ghost living inside my daughter's closet? My husband and I didn't have that many things that needed to be stored away, so there was nothing ever we needed to put in the attic. So I didn't know what was up there. And all this time, ever since that chipmunk incident, I had never even gone up there. The thought of something paranormal being up there so close to my daughter was too terrifying to think about. But when he plays with me, he can turn into a little ball, like this. She then tucked her knees to her chest and began rolling around on the floor like a ball. Seeing my daughter do this, I immediately released a sigh of relief. I had never heard of ghosts doing that, even around children. With this in mind, I finally came to the conclusion that she just had an imaginary friend. OK, sweetie, I said. Mommy's going to get started on dinner. You keep playing with Max, OK? This woman is very fucking brave. Mm. OK, Mommy, she said again. I patted her head before standing up to leave the room. As I made my way out, I almost laughed at myself for being so paranoid. I heard Bella laughing and chatting away when I got downstairs and I finally let myself chuckle at how ridiculous I was being. This went on for about a year. Bella would be up in her room most of the time playing with her imaginary friend by the closet. I would occasionally play with her, but most of the time she would just say that she wanted to play with Max. One day I asked her why Max couldn't come out to play with us, but she brushed it off and she said that she just wanted to play with him. I didn't question it further and I left the room thinking it was just a toddler thing. But I had to admit, I was getting a little hurt that my daughter didn't want to play with her mum anymore, but I decided not to push the matter and let her be her. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I felt it again. I woke up feeling a presence by me, staring at me. But just as I sat up in bed, that feeling was gone. I turned on the light next to me only to see an empty room once more. I rubbed my eyes tiredly, uh, chalking it up from lack of sleep and annoyance. I looked out to the door towards Bella's room thinking that she must have woken up in the middle of the night and that's what had woke me. I climbed out of bed to check on her but I saw that she was still asleep. A couple of days later I was getting the table set up for dinner when my daughter came over to me. Mummy, she said softly, I'm sorry. I was taken aback by her sudden apology. What for, sweetie? She looked at me with those sad green eyes. Because I don't play with mummy anymore. Max says I need to play with mummy more. I was confused by this, but I could see that she was genuinely sad about it. It's okay, sweetie. How about we play together after dinner? Bella's eyes lit up and a huge smile appeared. Okay, mommy. I giggled as I bumped her nose and caused her to giggle as well. How about I set another plate for Max? I asked. Don't do that. This is a bad idea. That way I can thank him for caring about me. Bella's smile grew wider. Okay. I knew that setting another plate for our guest was a little childish but if it made my baby happy then I was willing to play along is Max coming for dinner I asked no she answered Max doesn't want to come out why not because Max says that he doesn't want to scare mummy I'm sure he won't scare me sweetie I know but he still won't come down well then when can we meet him he says that he'll come out when he feels you're both ready I gave up and put the extra plate in the kitchen as days went by, Bella and I began to play in a room more often. I was a lot happier now that Bella wanted me around rather than playing with her imaginary friend. I was beginning to think that she was grown out of this phase. She would still play with Max in a room from time to time, but she would always make time to play with me. Things were simpler now and we were starting to feel normal. I couldn't be happier. But then one day, everything changed. That's the end of part one. Oh. We've got a series on our hands, guys. Oh, my God. Max, Bella, Peaky Lynn. I want to know, is here. Max, like, 
A bloke. Max is definitely a bloke. So he's an old. He's an old. He's massive, he's a isn't tall he? Massive man. head. He's a big lollipop. He's a big lollipop. With massive skinny arms. fingered eyes. <laughs> He sounds fair. <laughs> Hello. Does he? Well, you What's are. What's his number? <laughs> you are in the market for some love. Um, I don't think mm. Max. Um, mm. I just want one of the SAS lot. There's something about. Well, there's something. There's chill, the children and the ghost thing is just the most spooky thing to me. I quite like this series though, because it's like. This is like spanning a lot of time. It's not like a quick jump scare. You're like, this ghost is in it for the long haul. We're going to find out what happens in part two next week. Do you have a story for me? I do, but I've got got many. I've got many. What do I want to tell you? Let's see. Okay. Yes. I have a story for you. Hit me. Something really creepy happened to me yesterday. I'm still processing it because, what the fuck? Bit of context. I live in Ireland. Uh, It's a pretty peaceful country. I recently moved from Galway to Dublin. I moved to North Dublin, which is the rougher part, but it's still not too bad. I live with my family outside the city. It could be considered the countryside. The area is pretty rural. It's just houses and farms pretty much with no shops or stations nearby. Mind you, there are a lot of houses around, but we're all distance as we have big gardens. There are no sidewalks and the road is pretty narrow and worn out. It's rare to see cars, so it's fine to just go on the road. I was doing my daily 2K run. Oh, nice. 2K. Bish, bash, bosh. Is it, how long is 2K? How many miles is that? Um... <laughs> What a bad, stupid bit. I, I can't take you seriously. It's like doing a podcast <laughs> with Elton John. <laughs> Do like Rocket Man. I can't get. I can't get spooked out. I was like this, and then I looked at you, and you were like. <laughs> This is outrageous. Oh, my god! I can't gosh. believe I'm going to be doing this for so both funny. episodes. Fuck's sake. Don't go microneedling, kids. It's not worth it. Um, okay, I don't know. A 2K, a 5K is like your is it like couch to 5K. Miles? I think it's less. Is it less? Is it like one? I think it's a mile and a bit. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a... I've been swimming half a mile a day. Really? Mm. Oh, good on you, mate. Well, I'm going to try and do it five days a week. Shit. Where do you go? Nuffield or Adams Building. Oh, nice! Yes. You do love a swim. I love to. Su- I'm going to get me. A, I'm going. I'm going to have to get a cap though. Got to um, get a cap. I can't wash my hair every day. And what about those little earplugs? Got some of them. Got me goggles. Goggles, earplugs. I did a really weird thing the other day. This woman. Um, I don't know why I did it, but I was as I was swimming. You know that swimming. Mm. As I was swimming, um, and I had my goggles on. Um, this woman was like by the side, and she was like. Do you want to go first? And I just went, sorry! <laughs> and then swam off. When like, you, she was you like, feel fuck, like, who is this yeah. weirdo? When you have to apologise for nothing at all, you're just like... Sorry! <laughs> and like, that t- sorry! And she was like, oh, Jesus. Jesus, Christ. go ahead. Swim okay, away, take me back to Nino. Ireland. Okay, sorry. we're back in Ireland. I was going on my daily 2K run. I usually go around 6pm, but yesterday I had some studying to do and I went out around 9pm. It was pretty dark. Let me describe the experience. Imagine on the left, there'll be a house that's lived in, lights on. Then on the right, you'll see a field or a farm. And then you'll see an abandoned building right beside and then an area of trees for 200 metres. True. Mm. Fuck. Okay, I've got that in my head. For 200 metres or so. This is pretty much the whole road. Not abandoned but creepy enough to scare me at night. Anyways, I usually listen to music on my run with the volume all the way up so I can't hear anything. So I reach the area with a patch of trees. It's basically pitch black, the lights don't work properly. Occasionally they turn on and then flicker back off. So I need to use a flashlight to navigate. A song from West Side Story is blasting on my headphones and I'm vibing. This sounds absolutely terrifying. And then the lights flicker back my dip. <laughs> the lights flicker better. Flicker better. Flicker better. Flicker better. Flicker better. Flicker better. That's like, that sounded like a um, a tongue twister. Can you do those? <laughs> flicker back on. Can you do those? Uh, Peter Piper picked a pack of pick a pack of pick a pack of pickers. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickers. Peter Piper picked. Peter Piper picked. Betty, no. I was going. Betty bought. Ah, oh, fuck. Betty bought some butter. Betty butter bought some butter. Bought it made a batter bitter. So she bought some better butter and it made a batter better. 
I absolutely Congratulations. smashed that. Right, back to Ireland. Um, so she's listening to West Side Story. Uh, and then the lights flicker back on, so that's great. But that's when it hits me. There's a figure standing around 30 metres away, like, oh. like 20 metres from the road in the trees. First I thought I was seeing stuff, but no. He was standing still, not moving at all. I'm creeped, so I keep running. I turn the volume of my music down just in case to hear the figure move so I can make a run for it. I speed up and I pass the figure. I still don't turn up my music. After I'm around 100 metres away, I turn up the music and try and process what happened. Maybe I was seeing things because it was pretty dark. At this point, I'm long gone. However, I still have to come back home and I usually walk back the distance I ran. So basically I run 2K and I walk back 2K. Again, I come to that spot. This time the lights are flickering, but they're mostly staying on. I try to observe the spot where the figure was standing, but I see nothing. At this point I'm creeped out. I turn off the music and I start to run past that spot because I'm scared. And then suddenly a man jumps across the street right in front of me. It looks like the same figure. I come to a halt for a second, I'm shocked, and then he starts moving, so I turn around and start running as fast as I can. While I'm doing this, I start screaming for help, literally screaming as loud as I can while I'm running. I eventually pass the trees and the area... Mm, I eventually past the trees area and went to the area with the houses. Someone heard me screaming and came out asking me if everything was okay so I stopped running and realised that the guy is gone. I explain everything to the man. At this point I'm extremely creeped out and scared. I still need to get back home but my parents aren't home. They went over to their friend's house so I'm left home alone. I asked a stranger for a lift because I'm not going to go back there ever again. Thankfully the stranger isn't a big old creep and he kindly escorts me home. I lock all the doors and check everything to make sure I'm safe. Shortly after my parents arrive but I don't tell them anything because I don't want to worry them I haven't gone out for a run today because I'm genuinely scared I'm terrified thinking about what would have happened if I was too tired to run and he caught me that is terrifying I hate that Ooh. I hate that like you see something in the distance you don't know if it's actually a person or if it's and also like that, that I mean, that's just that's just creepy because it's probably yeah, it's some, uh, some bloke who's just watching her run and just jumping out. Men like, are generally creepy. They're, they're, there's nothing I'm more, more scared creepy. of society than ghosts. <laughs> exactly. We're getting politic, political. <laughs> political. Political. We're getting political. But it's true. Um, have you got another story for me, please? I have. Have, have I? Have I? Have I? Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah. The name of this story is I Explored a Mansion Where a Family was murdered. Oh. It's got a haunted house, it's got murder, it's got ghosts, it's got everything. Right. <clears throat> I motioned for Sam to follow as we quept... Oh, as we quept. We quept and quept. We quept up to the large... Quept, quept. I motioned for Sam to follow as we crept up to the large gate surrounding the allegedly abandoned mansion. Sam, who was visibly nervous about the situation, reluctantly joined me. There it is, Sam! Old <laughs> There it is, Sam. The Thomas Mansion. No, no I'm, accents at all. No, I mean go for it. Do, go for it. Why you There like? it is, Sam. The Thomas Mansion. I don't know what this accent is. What can I do? Shall I do? Shall I do? Shall I do, shall I do Northern again? Yeah. Okay. There it is, Sam. The Thomas Mansion. I looked up in awe at the building. Being an adventurous teen, <laughs> could have fooled me. I had always wanted to go ghost hunting. Amazing. So, of course, when I heard about the murder of the Thomas family, I knew I had to check the place out. Sam fumbled with his camera, trying to ensure it was set up properly. I sighed in frustration. I thought I told you to be prepared. I'm sorry, Dan. I was tired. Wait, so Sam and Dan. Sam and Dan. Two mates. Two mates. Ghost hunting. Could be women. Could be men. We don't know. Yeah. Danielle. Dan. Or Dan. <laughs> well, let's not get into that. I noted Sam's messy hair and half-open eyes. This guy was always trying to sleep. At least he remembered the camera. I was. I had began to focus my... Oh, fuck off. I began to focus on my mission and started to move. Sam followed, and after a few minutes of investigating, we found a window, which had previously been shattered. I crawled through the window first and then looked back. Sam was still peering through the window, his expression filled with worry. Sam, come on! <laughs> 
Sam and Dan, Sam the and dinner Dan. ladies <laughs> of Yorkshire. All the very old labourers. <laughs> Sam yeah. was visibly trembling. Do you, oh, do you really want to do this? Sam mumbled, his voice trembling along with his words. Yeah, we're already here, come on! Sam remained frozen in place. Irritation started to creep up within me. Just as I was about to scold Sam again, a loud crash mm. echoed through. No, sorry. Echoed from the other side of the house, causing both of us to jump. Sam, come on, will ya? <laughs> Sam shook his head in refusal. I sighed and snatched the camera from his hand before venturing into the hallway, searching for the source of the sound. Guess you'll have to do things yourself if you want to get them done at all. I muttered. I walked through the hall until I came upon a staircase where a dresser had apparently been thrown down. It had broken part of the railing and caused damage to the tile floor during its descent. It didn't take a high-level intuition to discern that that was the cause of the loud crash. Taking a moment to compose myself, I began my trek up the stairway. I was unsure of what lay at the top for me, but something deep within me temp tempted me to go up. The voice of curiosity that had brought me here continued to lead me. Just as I reached the top stair, I was startled by a loud creaking sound. It sounded like the pressure of stepping on a creaky floorboard, but I was sure it wasn't from my own step. Then I heard the opening and of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> then I heard the opening of a door down the hallway. I turned my head to see who or what was there, but the darkness of the hallway shrouded any visibility. I reached for the camera to turn on the flashlight I had attached to it and quickly pointed it in that direction. The light revealed nothing but an empty hallway. Gathering up my courage, I began to walk towards the door that had been opened. As I walked, I began to consider what hadn't crossed my mind until this very moment. What was I looking for? The Thomas family had been killed by some maniac named Jack Henderson, and the psychopath had already been arrested. Whatever clues were in here are long gone. Then the more obvious question hit me. Who else is in this house? Um, Jesus. Maybe someone else had come to snoop around, but I found that unlikely. This was an active case, and the murder had only occurred a week ago. Fucking hell. Oh, a bit fresh. It's a, it's, a bit, it's a bit much, isn't it? When I came here, the last thing I expected to find was someone else rummaging around and tossing furniture down the stairs. I stopped at the foot of the door. It was creaked open slightly and something deep within my soul told me that entering this room would be the worst kind of mistake. I could leave now and no one would ever know, or I could face the abyss within this room. I started to think about what the killer had said when, the qu when questioned about the murders. Mm, murders. Uh, murders. I started to think about what the killer had said when questioned about the murders. Jack Henderson's only statement on the matter was, his will be done. There had to be more to this. I had to find out. I think that's a religious thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Thine will be done. His will be done. Mm. Hers will be done. My yeah. face will be you done. You look like a fucking cult leader right now. <laughs> <laughs> you join my Anyone cult? Anyone for some Kool-Aid? <laughs> <laughs> a nice refreshing glass of apple cider vinegar. No, that's not right, Let's is it? Let's all jump off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> not me, though, because I am your leader. Yeah, I'm just going to stay here and just make sure that everyone goes. Um... <laughs> I gently opened the door, the light of my camera illuminating what appeared to be in a master bedroom, in which curtains and sheets were torn and strewn everywhere. Also notable was the stained blood of what I could only assume was the former Mr and Mrs Thomas. Oh, Jesus. The feeling of dread had not entirely dissipated, but I had tried to suppress it. My examination of the room found a lot of scattered and unimportant items, but then I noticed a piece of notebook paper on the nightstand. I reached out, grabbed a piece of paper, trying to discern the messy writing. As my eyes adjusted, the message became clear. Bad decision, Daniel. Oh, sweet How shit. did it? Wait. No, of course, it had to be a coincidence. That is my name, but I never knew the Thomases and I certainly had never been there before. The note must have been for someone else. I pocketed it just in case and looked towards the window. Who was that tall man watching from the wood line? Oh, fuck, not another one. Oh, yeah, that's... Fuck, it's the same one. It's jumped from story to story. My question would not be answered as someone grabbed me from behind and I immediately kicked and cried in fear. It was the police, of course. You don't go screwing around in a crime scene, causing ruckus and not get caught. I was a really stupid kid. Of course, they questioned me for a while and eventually I realised I was just an idiot with a camera. A camera which was not taken as evidence, of course. I was relieved. It seemed like everything turned out all right. The next day... 
Sam's mother reported that her son had been missing since the night before. Sam Ward has never been found. Oh, no! So Daniel's mate, Sam... Daniel! Went... We always thought it was Daniel that was in trouble and Sam went missing. So... And the police went in, police dragged went out in. Daniel. Where's Sam gone? Dead. <gasps> I, can only astru- I can only assume strung up like a pig <laughs> somewhere. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but that serial killer's yeah. gone. I thought the serial killer had been caught. Could be someone else or a ghost. It's a ghost. It's a, it's a ghost. ghost. It's that creepy Susie, man. I don't from- know if you know, but this is a ghost podcast. Um, also, I'm very disappointed I didn't get to do any more of my accent in that. Yeah, it's a Come shame. Come on, Sam, fuck her. Come on, Sam. Oh, you, you stupid bastard. You dead twat. You're dead. Um, right, I've got a, I've got a literally, and Get actually, me. it fits in with what you were saying about. Um, well, you'll see. I'm very um, excited. Blah, blah, blah. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit Bash. me with your rhythm stick. <laughs> Boom! Hit me. I do look a bit groovy today. You groovy look, chick. Yeah, you're very Elton John. <laughs> Bit Stevie Wonder, bit Elton John. <laughs> I do like. Yeah, I, well, your top's a bit seventies as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's the whole vibe, isn't yeah. it? And my little fringe. Oh, but are you liking my blonde? Oh, it's great. It's still, there's still a bit of red in it though, which is nice. Yeah. No, I'm strawberry. Strawbs. Strawbs. Do you think I'm just seeing blonde? But I like that the ends. Still. I can see. Can you? It's lovely though. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, okay, you can join my cult. Uh, right. <laughs> so we should have the exact same hairdo. <laughs> yeah. You, you aren't you going to get bangs? No. No. Okay. That's so weird. That, like now on that, it's just like that doesn't look like you. Who's anymore. she? Who's she? That fit bitch next to her there. Look at her. <laughs> that slag on Whoa, the podcast. Oh, those nails. I have to apologise for my nails before we move on. I'm so sorry. They're so shit. No, they're not. They're short. They're boring. I absolutely hate them. Well, you can fix that. I've got mine done in Midnight Swim. Oh, uh, Midnight Swim. Mm, so that's a shit. lovely name for Love a shade. That. Makes no sense, but yeah. Yeah, looks like Midnight Swim. What? Dark do you mean? blue. Well, it depends. If you're in the leisure centre at midnight, it won't be that colour. Okay. Midnight on. Sea, it should be called. Midnight Sea Swim. Oh, okay. I'll get in touch with OPI. Please. Um, <clears throat> on we go. Me and a few buddies decided to go camping on Mount Shasta. Oh. Driving up the side of the mountain to the camping spot, we all commented on the energy in the air. It just felt heavy. Oh. When we got to our campground, all the other spots were vacant. And that was eerie because we were there during peak camping months. Despite that, we moved forward with our plans and partook in drugs and dinner. Fair. <laughs> Hang on, drugs and dinner? Yeah, I love I that. I think you pick one or, one or the other. Not these guys. Like, who wants to do speed on a full tummy? (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe a spliff and some munchies. Oh, fine. Oh, fine, yeah. Probably not straight to speed. (laughs) Yeah, you just went straight in. Who has heroin and a cheeseburger? (laughs) Like, me, but (laughs) not when I'm camping. Don't diss my Saturday night. (laughs) Self-care. After dinner, we sat around the campfire when two white school buses with blacked out windows drove past our tents and further down into the campsite and further up the mountain. Again, we talked about the strange energy and who and what the buses were transporting at this hour. It was about 10 p.m. We shook it off and started to wind down for bed when my buddy, who was in a different tent, unzipped mine and asked if I could hear chanting. I listened. And I could definitely... Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> if, I, if I looked outside my tent and so, I saw you <laughs> in those fucking sunglasses, I like, would hum. I would piss. <laughs> you look like one of those like free love hippies. Yeah, like but they're the, they're the they're the fucking nutcases. The yeah, they'll do anything. Big orgy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's me. You're in the middle of an orgy with those sunglasses. <laughs> Sorry, it's my micro needling. <laughs> Don't look at me. A, a man in a van shouted sexy at me in these. Did he? Yeah. Oh, my God. He thought he was doing care of the community. Yeah. Don't make that poor bitch on feel the better stra- On the strand, I was like... I'll just I'll, call. I'll take it. <laughs> sexy. Which is a hate crime now. Oh, listen, I enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. Who doesn't? Really? Who doesn't? 
I was like, thanks for that, mate. He probably was talking to the girl behind me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was like see, 21. Gimme, gimme, gimme with Kathy Burke. I love Kathy oh, Burke. And gimme, gimme, gimme is amazing. You know, it reminds me of when she's walking down the street. <laughs> I was with those two little thingies of milk. And the bloke's like, wolf whistle. And she's like, thank you. But it's actually this really fit bird behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, they're like, fuck off. It's classic, that. So good. Anyway. Um... He asked if I could hear chanting. I'm so sorry, I can't look at you. I can't, it's making me laugh. <laughs> it's quite funny, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I can't. You've got can't a whole other be, episode of this as well. I can't be, like, scared. Well, shut your eyes. Okay. And, and listen to the story. I listened and I could definitely hear the same monotone chanting. We decided to investigate. We all got dressed and decided to go on a recon Chant, mission. to do it in the background. No, not a wimble way. No, this is a scary story, actually. Um, we decided. No, to... not a wimble way. It's not a wimble way. A wimble way is not for now. I'm so sorry. Carry on. Okay, I'm ready. Carry on. We decided to investigate. It was actually very exciting. We brought flashlights, but all agreed not to turn them on to avoid detection. As we crept up the mountain to where we suspected the group was, we spotted the two buses side by side. The chanting was definitely louder, but seemed to originate from behind the buses. We were pretty creeped out at this point, but proceeded. Two of us went to the back end of the bus, and three others went to the front so we could keep our profile low and figure out what was happening. As I peeked around the back of the bus, I saw about 30 people in full robes, circled around a woman in a chair, and a man in a full robe standing next to her. The man in the middle would chant something in another language. It sounded Latin. And then the circle of people would repeat the same incantation. We spied on this group of people for about three minutes when it dawned on us that this could potentially be a dangerous situation. I signalled to the others in the group to leave and we speed hiked back down to our tents. We discussed... We discussed after and came to the conclusion that it was most likely a cult. I can't speculate what they were doing with the woman in the centre. Maybe gangbang. <laughs> Maybe uh, sacrifice. Maybe gangbang. <laughs> Maybe gangbang. Hey, listen, it's Mount Shasta. What else are you going to do? Gangbang being like a verb. <laughs> Maybe gangbang. Are we are we gangbanging? <laughs> gangbang on Mount Shasta, yeah. Can you open the savvy piece so we can get gangbanging? Get the speed. Get the burgers. All I want is just <laughs> speed. Gangbanging burgers <laughs> in that order. Maybe gangbang. Maybe sacrifice. But it all felt very unnatural maybe and unsavoury. <laughs> the next day, we decided to pack up early and we booked it down the mountain to Oregon to get a hotel. We still speculate about what we could have stumbled on, and we all get goosebumps talking about it. That is with two bosses. Isn't that fucking... I don't know where Mount Shasta is. Maybe people can write Oregon. in and let us know. Oregon. But, like, I can't imagine it. Like... Richard Lehman's got quite a few books on mountains and they're fucking weird. Yeah, th I think weird shit happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, there's up. one about an old woman having a shit on a rock and, like, using it to wash her hair. Oh, God, that's so Richard Lehman. Oh, it's so classic. That really jarred and stopped me in my to, tracks. If you want to hear us read some Richard Lehman, please do move over to www.patreon.com slash ghost hunts, where you can find an array of uh, content, videos, ghost hunts, and various other things for only £4.50 a month. Yes, that's right, £4.50 a month. It's a bargain, and it's bloody... Oh, here we are, Tim sent us Mount Shasta. Really? I haven't got Oh, that. my God, it's fucking massive. Is it? Look at that! Whoa! To find a couple of buses on there, that'd that be is, mad, wouldn't it? That is weird. It's huge. It looks Mount like Everest. Shasta. It, do you know what? It does. There's a lot of numbers and coordinates on here that I don't understand. Forty-one dot twenty-four thirty-three N W. I don't know. Are you ready for Creep of the Week? Please, Alton, Mr. John. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Who's this from? <laughs> it is from Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, I bet you didn't realise that you were going to get... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lindsay, I'm reading this out with musical my... Musical legend fashion. reading out your story. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Ghost Tons. I love listening to your storytelling and I thought I would pass on one of my own scary stories. Well, technically my mum's. Oh, thanks, Lindsay Hahn. This is a story I'll never forget. Years ago, my uncle was very unwell and had been rushed to the Royal Infirmary in Glasgow. He was that unwell he'd been given his last rites. 
My aunt was in the room with my uncle, along with a handful of doctors and nurses. It was 3 a.m., and with my uncle being so gravely ill, my mum and her other sister accompanied her to the hospital for moral support. My mum and aunt weren't allowed to be in the room where my uncle was being worked on, so they sat out in the hall. A little while into their wait, a nurse appeared from upstairs and let them know she was down for ice, as the floor she was on was roasting. She asked my mum and aunt who they were waiting on, and they let her know that their brother-in-law was in a very bad way and he wasn't expected to last the night. With that, the nurse said, I'll go and get an update for you, and disappeared into the room where my uncle was. After a short time, the nurse came out of the room, ice in hand, and let my mum and aunt know that their brother-in-law was going to be fine. He had pulled through. They thanked the nurse and she disappeared back up the stairs. After a short time, my aunt came out to let my mum and my other aunt know everything was okay. He was out the woods and they could go home. My mum said the nurse who had entered the room for ice had already passed on the good news. What came next scared the bejesus out of them. Seemingly no one had been in or out of the room the whole time they were in there. When they described the nurse they had spoken with to the docs and nurses, they said, Oh yeah, she's often seen walking the halls. And by the way, upstairs is not in use and it hasn't been for years. To this day, my mum will tell me word for word exactly what they saw and is still spooked by it. Turns out the Royal Infirmary, I assume due to its age, has had quite a lot of visitors roaming the halls in its time. Thanks, girls. Love your podcast. Keep Jesus. up the good work. Oh, my God. That is so fucking spooky. Ah! <laughs> Adam's mum told me the other day that she saw a monk in her bedroom. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. She was like, no. And she, she's like, she's like, I saw it. I put the quilt over my head because I was really scared. And it was in the morning as well. It wasn't even at night time. Where? In her bedroom. In Streatham? Yeah, in Streatham. Shit. Yeah. How bad's that? She was just like, just walked through the glass. She doesn't have any explanation or it. No. Wow. She's Does like, she I'll believe be, in just, any yeah, of that yeah, stuff? Yeah, she's like completely believe in it now. Like, I've seen one. Wow. I love mm. that. I love that. Okay. Um, uh, Are we ready to do a game? Yes. Sorry, not a game. Are we ready to contact the dead? We get haunted so you don't have to. You're going to do one for me? Yes. Oh, I can do one. Yeah. Okay. This uh, fits... Because I'm not prepared. Uh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna I use thought it was going to be a, a love prepare. potion. Yeah, I haven't got the... I was going to do a love spell, and yeah. then I thought I might save that okay. until I've got an actual potion. Okay. Because um, I want... It's going to be a big deal, that one. Oh, a huge deal. Because I want it to work for you. Yeah, me too. Okay, so... What I will do is... More because I want, when you get married, to, like, me have give a speech and be like, I made this happen. Oh, my God, imagine! I created a love potion. Um, okay, so, um, this is kind of... You know what I was saying that I guessed the earrings? Yes. This is a telepathy game. Okay. And much like yogurt, I'm going to... Th- this. Me? Do you remember yogurt? I tried to send Sorry. you yogurt. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It did need some context, that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm going to try. This is like, it's a simple game. Um, and here are the parameters of okay. how it's going to work. So, um, what I, what okay, each player, okay, you have to choose a shape. And you can pick any shape, but ideally, it's like circle, square, hexagon triangle right pick one and then choose a color for it so do i tell you no so what you're picking that in your head right yeah and you have to now basically i'm gonna empty my mind you're gonna just focus on whatever shape you've picked okay and you're gonna try and send it to me okay so i'm gonna so so look at... Where are you? I'm, <laughs> my gift is my song. <laughs> I opened my eyes and I just forgot about the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yellow brick road. Okay. So, um, empty your mind, get Elton out of your head, mm-hmm. just send... And I'm gonna really, I'm gonna okay. empty my mind, and I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna this receive here. this shape and the color. Okay, ready? Yeah. Go. I'm quite... 
I'm trying as hard no, as I can. Are you just, getting anything? No, just keep going, keep going. And everyone at home, okay. try and do the same. Hannah, just send it. Okay, I'm sending every, it. To everyone listening. I'm sending it to everybody. Okay. I've... Okay. Okay, should I guess? Should I have written it down for... Write it on your phone. Okay. I think I've got it. If you've got it, <laughs> that is so fucking weird. Okay. Have you written it down? Hang on, that's my that's my material. That's our Edinburgh money. Okay, I'll write it there. I got square. Yes. No. Yes, it's square. I got blue. Ah, oh, do you know what? That's so Red. That's so annoying because at first I was going to go blue. Were you? I, I was. Well, that was your original thought. What was it? It was pink. But only because I'd seen that as a pink square. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's so annoying. It did, it, but I did. To be, I wish I'd have stuck with blue because it was the first thing that popped yeah. into my head. All right, I'm going to write down what I'm going to send to you, okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, you're going to do square and shape. You're going to do... Um, a shape square. and a colour. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And I'm not sending orange rectangles. Yeah, that's what I was going to I was getting, yeah, I thought maybe I should go orange squares. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think I've got it already. Have you? I have. Do you know what? I've just closed my eyes and I've just seen... A shape and a colour. I can still see it now. Okay, go on. Red circle. No. Fuck! That's a shame. Is it red? No. Is it a circle? No. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong on both really counts. Really close. <laughs> <laughs> it actually could be further from what that. What was it? Yellow triangle. No. I, I saw a red circle. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I'm so, so on this occasion, sorry. you haven't passed no. the well, game. No, none of us have done that. That's great. Well, uh, so we aren't very telepathic. Oh, shame. Um, well, thank you for joining us for episode 46. Yes, thank you so um, much. Don't forget, um, there's absolute chaos on Patreon. You've got to join it. Um, by the time you listen to this, the East Drive will be out and it's going to be spooky as fuck. It will. Oh my God, yeah, East Drive will be out. Yeah. Um, it's very exciting. Also... We are doing a second show after our first sellout show on Halloween. We're doing a second one. It's going to be Huns Late. I don't know. If we're not calling it that. It's shit. But it is a live. Yeah. It's Ghost Huns Live. It's in London. It's at Museum of Comedy. The link to buy tickets is all over our Instagram. Yeah, and they're flying fast. So if you want to come to the they later show fast. on the Tuesday, the 31st of October in the Museum of Comedy, book them. Uh, my eyes will be healed by then. I'll yes, be able to see we you. We hope all. so. Well, yeah, Anything it's, it's a very intimate setting. It's in a fucking crypt oh, it's as in well. A crypt. It's in a crypt. I can't We've wait. got so many lovely scares for you. Oh. Um, so please do book tickets. If there are any left, there may not be, but please do check because we'd love to see you there. All right, thank you. Bye, bye guys. Bye, 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 bye,